Okay, you can ask ask um, the representative that he should be able to answer answer you. Thank you, Edvis, for that one. Now we're going to, in fact, the meat of the matter. Of course, um, we didn't open school for the purpose of just opening school. We like to make some money, you know. <laughs> we like to make some money from, you know, profit is what matters now, you know. When you make profit from your, you know, endeavors, that's when you can come out and say, look, I started this school as a so and so. Look at me now. I have made so and so turnover, you know. <laughs> and that's what we want to talk about now is the money thingy, very important. So um, we'll be calling on, we're having, we are going to be having a panel um, of discussion session again, but this time around, we're going to have we're going to be talking about school marketing and growth. Yes, very important. School marketing and growth. And we'll be having Omolara Odumusu. She is an educational consultant. Let me stop that there because I have learned not to read profile too much. <laughs> so, let me respect my very young age and um, not go ahead to read her profile. <laughs> it's available on the internet. Google is you. Google her name. You're going to find it out there. And um, we're going to also have. Please, can she come up, please, Ma? Thank you. Put your hands together. Thank you. We're also going to have the CEO of Edvest, Dimiji Falana. Um, yes. Please put your hands together for him as a company. The guy, the guy who actually put, together, put this together with his team. And to so moderate this session, we have Josephine Akinyesi. Akinyesi, I should learn how to pronounce your brand name as well. Akinyesi, Akinyesi. Please correct me when you come on stage. You'll be talking about um, marketing and growth of schools. And I want to employ us to please just hold on. We are almost done. We'll be talking about something very interesting after this. We're talking about security, which is very important and is the foremost thing on the minds of the parents. Security. We're going to be talking about immediately after this. So I hand over the mic to you to please deliver in. Okay, thank you very much. So sorry for this interruption. And we, we have, have uh, one of our mentors around, and then she would like, like to say one or two words before she leaves. Her name is Mrs. Nika Ogunde. Let's put our hands together. Let me shake, shake you and hug you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Because, because I actually, actually told, told him I didn't want to say anything today. It's just to bash it and out. Well, well, he knows how to arrest me and make sure that I say something. And, and I would actually love to wait for this session because school marketing and school growth, that's, that's an area that I'm so passionate about. And I believe that uh, Mera will actually do a lot of justice to it. So I want to congratulate you uh, for putting something like this together. And I'm glad I actually waited for the presentation because I'm able to see what they actually have to offer. And uh, whilst Wada was making her own presentation, she said something about Europe, about the language, the native language. And as she was speaking, it just struck me that I was actually, about an hour or two ago, listening to Professor Molly saying the same thing. That was the former vice chancellor of the University of Ife. And he was also going exactly the same route as the way out. And that means that it's an issue that we all need to take seriously. And then the interesting dimension of technology. It's amazing what is happening. This is a wonderful time to be an educator. So please celebrate yourself as I am celebrating you. And I believe that the profession has changed so much. And even though the children that we are bringing up today, so many things are happening within that system. Some are educators, we are still able to cope. It is challenging. And I think we are even coping even better than parents. Because some parents don't even know exactly what to do again. But here we are. We are learning, we are sharing, we are growing. A, a clear, clear determination, determination to improve. 
So I, I want to say that, that I'm sure this has been a worthwhile experience, experience for everyone. Because, because this is a time and a season that educators are being called upon to do so much in this country. country. Not, Not only in Nigeria, Nigeria I'm sure, globally. globally. And, and I can boldly say a lot of us are rising to that, to to that, that challenge. challenge. Otherwise, Otherwise, I wonder where Nigeria will have been. If you close your eyes for two seconds and just picture Nigeria with our private schools, where would we be? Just picture us with our private educational institutions and we're totally dependent on government. I'm sure this will not be the same country. And that's why I believe that educators, private institutions, public institutions must be supported if we're really going to go ahead in this nation. I wish you all the best. I'm, I'm sure, sure it has been a very useful day for you. And by the time you listen to this session, session it comes down to the meet and greet. How do you make your school to actually grow? How do you catch the students that you need to actually get? How do you make your school to be profitable? That is a very, very important session. And I know that you will, have, you will benefit tremendously from the speakers that we have called here. God bless, bless you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Say a word about Dimitri and, and all the things that he has done in here. I mean, the, 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 the Edwards Catalyst team. Honestly, when I think it was last year that we actually met then the way at Tosi. And when I see the things happening within technology, my eyes go like this. Eh, eh, eh. What is it? And, and they made, made it so, so easy. So, so well, well done, done guys. God, God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, okay. She, she, has, has, um, she has already pointed out what we need to know about school growth and marketing. Okay, okay now we're going to go into it. it. Um, and of course, we're going to be defining what school growth is and also what... Um, how, how we can grow, grow our school, school and also how we can market our school. school. So, so okay, I will start with uh, Mrs. Mrs. Odomosuma. This is kindly define uh, school, school growth. Good afternoon, everybody. It's been a very wonderful time. We all agree. Yes, ma'am. And we've, it's been a learning time too for us also. No matter how fast your number of years of experience is in the industry. to take school owners on a program called um, International Education Retreat to different parts of, let's start with Africa. And we're in a school in Ghana, Galaxy International, precisely. And when they got into the school, the ambience, the environment, the people you interact with, the teachers, the students, their comportment, Communication in the environment is like having a nine-month-old person pregnant. Does he or she need to introduce to you that she's pregnant? In all ramification, you know this is a good school. Okay, so we have to think about it before we talk about isolation of growth. When those 400 schools, when I interacted with most of the heads of schools, they didn't have the knowledge. And so they employ teachers into the classroom. And such schools are growing. Let's put the growth in quotes. When I started thinking about it, some of them have 30 children in their classrooms. Subjects were not being delivered. Hidden curriculum was poor. Like we were talking about curriculum, there are several types of curriculum that a school must be mindful of. One of it is the hidden curriculum that can sell your school very fast. Even before you get to the examination age, you know, some schools, primary level, until your, your students begin to write entrance examination for two, three consecutive years before you can boldly say our school is doing well. But the hidden curriculum of a school, the values of a school, the things you hold in high esteem, are all the things put together that can accelerate the growth and progress of your school in the right direction. And when I say growth in the right direction, it has to be a positive growth. It has to do with 
you implementing good quality program from time to time that would affect not just the school but your community. It has to do with how you groom your teachers, whether professional or unprofessional. Okay? So many places like the British Councils have a program called them um, Continuous Professional Development that you can engage your workers. Even if you have employed them from other profession, you keep ensuring that there's continuous growth professionally. And so when all this put together, every year there must be a plan to up your game with the environment of the school. And you need to prioritize. For example, this year I thought a CCTV would do well in my school. Because on those states it's becoming the crime rates there. I run my own school too, aside from my consulting firm. The crime rate is increasing. So a woman was trailed to my school. So I saw CCTV as not, um, not just luxury, but a necessity. And so that encouraged most of, because of the kind of demographic issues we're having in Ondo State, my school is attracting only a particular class of people. I mean people. Okay, and this class of people have to be very sensitive to security issues. Commissioners, the likes of them, politicians, you know, some of them really actually have a lot of things, people to pick things with. Okay? And so, every year, you need to look at the peculiarity of your school. You look, need to look at the demographic issues around your school. You need to engage your parents. Just like somebody was saying, a medical doctor can come in and talk to the children who is a parent at no cost. Okay? You need to get them integrated and entwined into the program. And that's one of the things I call the population processes. When the idea comes, you need to look at the idea. Then you need to sit and plan. After planning, you put on the actions. And it has to be actionable goals that you're setting. So for a school to wake up year in, year out, um, you're on the same track. You're not looking at competitors around you. You're not seeing their competitive edge. You're not looking at your own selling points. And then you want to grow. How is that going to be possible? And the rate, when we talk about acceleration, the rate and the speed at which you're growing, is it sustainable? That's another question I'll leave with you. This year, the school fees is 50,000. Next year is 100,000. 100% increase. Do you have programs around the school that have been improved to the extent that even when parents see that there's increments in fees, they won't go window shopping elsewhere. There's something to tie them back. Am I making any sense? Now, so, growth has to be measurable. When processes, like the normal life processes, you plant a seed today. When you plant a corn, there's a particular number of months you start investing, true or false. But when you plant um, a palm tree, for example, there is a particular also timing and stage you start harvesting. A lot of people want to harvest their crops when they've not watered enough. When they've not nurtured the idea enough. And so they go extinct because they want to pack all the money they invested. School business, unlike every other business, is um, a long-term thing. For the first five years, you may, not, you may not make a dime. That's the truth. And you need to be pulling from other sources to grow the business. And so if you expect to start making money, some people will give you some <laughs> ideas about school. You just want to borrow 40 million from somewhere and then come and invest and expect that the next year you start... Children are not guinea pigs, are they? And I was so impressed when the Mr. Malomo was talking. Because unfortunately, the today's parent have the faint
faintest idea about what to look out for when they're window shopping for schools. It's just unfortunate. They visit private schools looking at the, how magnificent the buildings are, the kind of English the children are speaking, and so on and so forth. And so they say, oh, this is my choice of school. Those can, things can attract parents, but those things cannot sustain the growth of the school. In little or no time, they will see that your hidden curriculum is appalling. You don't have good academic standards in place. Your team, your workers, are not doing enough concerning their professional growth. And you know, every parent lately, you know, because of Google and all of that, they are becoming very smart. Despite the fact that they are not informed in the area of knowing exactly what to look out for. But very soon, they will, they will start feeling funny. They will start feeling there's something wrong about this, my child's school. And then they will start benchmarking with friends. Please, your three-year-old, what is she doing right now? Is she reading? Do we have such experiences? And some of them will come to my office and say, Mrs. O, unfortunately, your children cannot count up to 500. And I, I, my, my three-year-olds cannot count up to 500. And I tell them that if they can count up to 200, they can count forward, they can count backwards, they can count on in fives, they can count on in tens. And that, I think, is better than do, uh, allowing them to do rote memory that they will not be able to do anything with. And so a lot of parents don't understand. And so the parental education that Rhoda talked about is highly essential. There's a program in my school called Parental Awareness and Enrichment Program. We invite them from time to time, time talking to them about the school program, talking to about so many things they need to know as parents. You know, that's why it's enrichment and awareness. What's your parenting environment like? So that whatever we're teaching the children in the area of character education in the school can also be taught back at home. We need those collaborating experiences with parents. And so these are things you can do to market those schools. I haven't put all those things in place. We can do a lot of things like the portal, okay, create more awareness on social media, put suits, Twitters, Instagrams, have a good website. Because the way people see you is the way you are addressed, true or false. Some people say extrinsic factors are not important. They are. Because that's the very first driving force that would attract people to what you're doing as a school owner. Before they begin to now look inwards. Okay? So if you must have a website, it has to be properly constructed. True or false, Mr. Dimeji? Sure. Because when somebody says I'm benchmarking with Corona, they want to see what the website of Corona looks like. And what the website of your school looks like. Some of the websites are static. And some of them, they have nothing to write home about. So for me to start driving from Ikoi to Ikeja to even look at your school, what I've seen on the internet is enough to tell me who are the brains behind that kind of school. Are we making sense? Yes, ma'am. Now, you, um, you need to foster good team spirit with your workers. Because if you gain their loyalty, there are things they say to your parents behind, positive, sometimes negative, okay? So you need to keep your teachers highly motivated, okay? And how can you do that on, the, on, the, on maybe a possession or something? You need to look at programs you can include in the school program that will ben be beneficial to your teachers. So... Thank you. Thank you very much, Matthew. Let's clap on our feet. Thank you very much, Matthew. Okay. Uh, she has said it all honestly. I am just thinking about what I should say. Uh, but last year, we, we were uh, accepted for a program, an uh, accelerator program uh, by Intel, and then we were taught on uh, organizational growth and 
business boat. And we were, uh, we received a lecture from uh, uh, the marketing manager, Heinz. They make ketchups and uh, mayonnaise. And the, the man came in to come and teach us how to sell software. We were like, what are you talking about? Some of sell food, and you're saying you should come and teach us how to sell software. Or at the end of the day, we discovered that going out of the box sometimes, you can actually get a lot of things uh, working for you. And then we applied all these strategies, and uh, in the space of one year, we grew more than three times. From 77 schools, and today we have 300 schools. Wow. It's just in the space of one year. And uh, the major thing that I would say, which is actually in line with what she said, is knowing what you want to do. Number one, breaking it down. Which type of student do you want to raise in this school? Then you itemize, then you can now say, the parents that will have this kind of student, how can I get them? Where are they? Your school can be anywhere, but the content that you are giving out can attract people from different parts of the country. So uh, we sat down and then we did a lot of things, a lot of restructuring, we did a lot of things and we saw growth, I mean, well, I mean, we saw growth, schools coming in, and we have well over 100,000 users on our platform now. And defining what you want to achieve is actually the first thing. If you haven't done that, you can still define which type of student. So that when you grow, like she said, if you grow that number of students you want to, you want to, you want to raise, that's it. Because you've defined them already. So when they are not coming, part of your product, you know that, no, something has happened. Because the measure, the measure will tell you what is going on. And another thing I want to add to it is that we did a lot of things outside of the bus, which made me to come up to say, okay, can we get teachers to go for industrial attachments during the break? Chemistry teacher to go to pharmaceutical companies to learn practical. Computer teachers to come to address to learn programming. A lot of things, I mean, now you have that already. Love you love that, okay, thank you very much. Now, when they get back to school, they're on fire because they have seen it, practical. They've, they've experienced it and they've created the network with the people that are actually implementing. So when they, when they have the eight, eight, eight to hole in chemistry on the board, they can break it down and give that that thing that you are taking from so 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 drug, this is how the A2 whole reacted, and because they've seen it, and then the student will learn better. And when the student go out there, they go with your school brand, and they go and just glue to what is happening outside the school. But if we continue to have teachers that don't know what is happening in the industry, to continue to train the students. The students will not glue to what is happening outside. And you know one thing? The, those students will hate the school. They will hate the school. Yes, I know a lot of teachers that, fine, thank God, I've forgiven a lot of teachers. I've <laughs> forgiven a lot of teachers. So now, getting the teachers to go for industrial attachment, there's a side to it. Somebody can say, oh, probably like send them for attachment and then they employ them. Oh, good. What of if they stay and they are not? What's different? That was a time. Early, was it last year? I, I made a prayer that, okay, all, the, all our programmers, okay, you guys, if your breakthrough is going to be like living IT based, I mean, our company, then it's going to come. All of them said yes. Amen. And one thing or the other, some of them are working in Handela, working for Google now, Microsoft. And these guys, they were with us. Almost all of them, you know, they started getting opportunities. And they, when, whenever they come to us, they say, um, so Meiji, I'm going to say, oh, what next again? Okay, then we connect them, then they move. We connect them, then they move. Now, we've grown a network of people that we can pull together again, that have learned that something that we cannot give to them. They've learned. There are some of them that they were telling me, Mr. Dimeji, you know this thing is, I said, I've never known. Okay, let me learn this, let me learn this. Let me tell you something. We just have to think outside of the box. We can't contain staff to continue to be in the school. That's just the, that's just the right let them go out and explore. We can make links available. KPMG is the PWC. 
you know, all those accounting firms, let accounting teachers go there. Let them learn. So if you need this, we can always walk around it and network and then connect your school to some of these companies for internship. Another thing is, uh, I've, I've discovered that a lot of schools will have events and then you only invite your parents to the event. No, Africans like events. Invite the people you are targeting for your event. Give them good food. We like, we like events. Give them separate chairs. Invite non-parents. When they come around, they will see what you are doing. And then, you know, before you know it, they'll say, well, Mr. Wadis, excuse me. And, you know, it goes on and on like that. Another thing I want to bring in is uh, community development projects. I've seen a school bus, you know, passing through my area several times. There's always this photo and everything. And I started thinking one day, I said, okay, these students, they go through this photo every day, and their school is not far from that place. And then they just go and go and go and go. What of if a student put 200, 300 together? And then they call some people to come and fix the road. Why the students supervise? And then you take picture and put it on social media. You do something. Those students, they will grow up to be responsible. That's part of it. And this will sell your school. I have a deck that it contains a lot of all this out of the post idea. And I think I can share uh, after the program so that we can all have it. So I, won't, I don't want to take much of your time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sam. Really appreciate it. Okay, once you have, um, want to give time for questions, like questions? Do you have any questions? Does anyone have any questions? Questions? I believe we should have questions. Is it too good or too bad? Too good. So that means. Okay. Observations. Do you have any observations? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, yes. All right, please. I have an observation. An observation and a question. Um, the observation is, there was a message that was sent to us by Teams yesterday, and then it said, land, landmarks are Allen Junction and uh, Computer Village. I was trying to locate this place within the framework of that. I think it was too wide. I would have thought if an airport hotel is actually the, the landmark that would have been used for this place. That's the observation. My question. Um, there was People's a classrooms, they know. If you're not doing it well, I'll teach you, I'll kick you out of the classroom. or get you to sit and I mentor teach right in front of you. Now, for people like us, we're not afraid to lose teachers. And so we would always expose them. I'm the one that keeps telling my teachers, look, do TKT. You do this. You, you have strength in this area. You, you have strength in that area. And so, like you rightly said, sir, it's school owners who don't know what they're doing. Who don't know the ripple effect this would have on the school children and the alma mater in 10 um, in 10 years, 20 years down the line, that would stop their teachers from developing. If I'm continuing in the area of development professionally at this age, my first son is 30. And from time to time, I attend trainings. I was in the last TOSE. I attend trainings in any part of the world, once I can afford it. So why won't I encourage my teachers to go for training? In fact, if you sit in my school for two whole years and you don't have a certificate to show, maybe for someone like me, I've been to CMD for training. I got the license and accreditation over seven or eight years ago. I can't count the number of certificates. I bring my bags of certificates here. And that's why I'm sure she didn't want to start looking at it. So you need to keep growing as a school owner. Because you're the first face of the school. If a parent comes for inquiry, you're the very first person they will meet. They will test you. They want to know how much of what you're doing you know. And so keep the school environment a continuous learning environment for both teachers and learners. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Yes, uh, okay. Concerning, you know, keeping the teachers, I, I think what we can do to keep them is to give them that enabling environment, the training and then the, 
the resources, the motivation, and everything. And once people want to lead, please connect them properly. I always tell most of the people I meet that, okay, I can point to successful developers around Nigeria. One of them got associates in Android development for Google last week, no, two weeks ago. And he actually learned through our company as an IT student. He came, he said, Mr. Dimeji, let me try my luck. I said, okay, come in. And now today, he has been recognized by Google. I can point to him. It's no more with me, but I can say he, he came through. So now, other, other young brains that are willing to learn, they will know that this is a company to work for if you also want to grow. So let's let teachers say, this is a school to work for if you want to grow. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. You. Okay, we'll come to the end of this section. Okay, sorry. She has to take a question. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, please, I have this concern, and I want it to be probably clear at this point. We have this issue in Nigeria. We so much believe in certificates. Yes, I want to ask, is it compulsory you must be, I mean, you must have the NC or BED certificate before you become a teacher, a good teacher? Okay. I want to ask you, I'm going to use a question to answer your question. Is it compulsory for a medical doctor to acquire a first degree before operating on a patient? Teaching is a profession, like every other profession, accounting, law, you fail you fall held long if you don't, you don't acquire the right certificates. And if you are sure that you want to remain in that career, let me remind you that there's something going next year. <laughs> A lot of people will be thrown out of the teaching profession. When the teacher's certification program is going to be, you know, in compulsory in all the schools for you to teach. Right now as we speak, thousands of schools have been shut down in River State. Hello? When the legislative arm will come up with a law that will say, of course, CAC registration doesn't permit someone who didn't read education to register as a school owner. So there are lots of schools out there that are not even registered with CSE. Or they get other people's certificate to register their schools. So why don't you just go for it once and for all? Thank you, ma. Okay. And children, I will repeat again, are no guinea pigs. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Concerning the certificates, let me just say my last uh, view on this. Um, it is because content that makes the certificate is questionable. That's why a lot of people are fighting the certificate. Certificate is good for you to have so that it will show that you, you actually went through the system. So I think the certificate is not the problem. Get the certificate. But the content is, is, the, is the issue. You understand? So that's the, that's the only thing I want to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. We've come to the end of the section. Thank you. Please, let's appreciate them with a clap. Thank you. Hello, hello, hello. Okay. Um, awesome. 